Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race First of the Community is C-Class Front Wheel Drive Cars and race number one was at the Sakuba Circuit. Now I'm running front wheel drive cars or restricting this one to front wheel drive cars as normally when we do one of these races 90-95% of the cars that turn up are rear wheel drive so I thought I'd make it interesting and yeah we're, we're going to run some front wheel drive cars have some very different characteristics and by making them sort of C-Class all the cars are going to be fairly close and it should produce some very very good racing as we come into the head been for the first time there was a little bit of scraping there wasn't anything any major incidences on this first lap I then managed to go around the outside of an Akira somehow I don't know how I did that around the Dunlop corner that is a tough corner to go around the outside but uh, my focus was proving pretty good I picked this car purely because it was light like standard wise it was fairly light there's a little bit of a collision going on further behind um, but again, after the opening lap, nobody had any major damage, which is a good thing uh, for, <laughs> for one of these races. We head towards the front, and there was a fairly big scrap already developing over the lead between a Renault Twingo, a Honda Civic of some sort, and a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Now, you see there, the Eclipse had run wide, and that's not unusual. Somebody just outbreak themselves a little bit and end up on the dirt, but there was an, a massive, massive lag spike that I have no idea how it worked, that uh, destroyed the Twingo and the Civic, and they're at the top of the banking as everybody else files through, all sort of squabbling over whatever position they might be in. This was a, a humongous lag spike. I'm just going to take a look at the telemetry from this car. Um, I've raced against this guy many times. Not normal for him to have this sort of lag. Uh, we're going to kind of slow things down a little bit, and you'll see. So the lag's starting here. It's jumping the car backwards a little bit, as it normally does. And then it starts going really quite fast. That is a 1,000 miles an hour. Um, Amazingly, it goes through my car and goes through the Clio without an incident. As you can see in front, what the car's already gone flying where this car is about to appear. We've hit 1,500 miles an hour, and I think that might be a record of sorts. And then, yeah, it suddenly just jumps into that location and whacks the Civic and the Twingo off. Um, I, I don't know. I, it was, it's a very odd, it's very peculiar to have just one singular lag spike like that. It's not unusual to see a car jumping around a little bit and knocking cars off. Very unusual to see a car suddenly jump that far and then carry on with absolutely no other issues. Don't know what, was, what quite was, uh, <laughs> was going on there. But um, yeah, people were sort of starting to sort themselves out, I guess. Whenever we do this, we start with a random grid. So the fast cars could be at the back, the fast cars could be at the front. And the Civic was making its way through the order. I was slightly concerned about these Civics. I know the, I think this is 97 Civic, are incredibly fast in B-Class. If, uh, if built correctly, and I was fearing they might be quite dominant in C-Class. Although, again, we had a very good variety of cars. You know, there's not huge, huge numbers of Civics or Clios or whatever. There is a good, a good spread, a good number of different vehicles. And while this Civic was pretty damn quick, it certainly wasn't running away with things. So now trying to catch up to the back of a Clio and find its way past. Now, there's two broken cars that got destroyed by the lag spike, uh, ended up making their way to the inside of the hairpin. A little bit awkward, yes, um, but, you know, they're there. Everybody knows where they are. We just had to drive slightly differently. It's no more like, like, like um, avoiding any other obstacle. It's not particularly hard. And people who say that we should have a rescue vehicle and everything, yeah, I kind of, I get the point, as the Civic makes a dive up to the hairpin, a good overtake there. Um, however, if you were trying to roll those vehicles back onto their wheels, a rescue vehicle would cause more issues than it's solved. As, you know, there'd be another car trying to move about when people are racing, it would just make a mess of things. Uh, it didn't seem to matter what position you were in, there was plenty of good racing going on uh, throughout the field. And that's what I love about running these slightly slower uh, cars. You just get better racing. Scoob is also a pretty good track. For, for racing, there's lots of places you can try and, and overtake. Straight line speed is still very important, as it always is with these, as this Akira has slightly better straight line speed than the Hyundai, meaning it can defend a lot easier into the final corner. Of course, the Hyundai is a little bit better through the corners, and as the Akira runs a little bit wide, the Hyundai can get itself on the inside as they come up towards the first corner. Not really sure what happens in the change of camera angles, but suddenly they end up on other, each, the other way round. Yeah, I <laughs> they somehow did a crisscross. The Hyundai's now trying to get a cut back on the first corner, but again, the Akira has a bit better straight line speed. They're gonna go side by side through these very fast corners, but with that slight, you only need a tiny straight line speed advantage and it can be really quite useful. Uh, defending was a little bit interesting with the uh, <laughs> with the stricken cars, but you know it, it was just part of the racetrack um, by this point. 
at the front and there was a big scrap over the lead. This is a three-way battle um, for the lead. My focus was very, very quick in a straight line. I was impressed with this car. Uh, the Clio was very good through the corners, while the Eclipse that was leading was sort of good overall. Husky's car is in fourth. I'm not sure if he got caught up in some of the start incidences, but uh, yeah, Husky was a little bit further back in fourth. The Clio is trying to find his way past the Eclipse. He's on the inside. Uh, through the first corner but then you end up on the outside you don't really want to be there through these next bits I see my opportunity see a little bit of gap and put my car on the inside and play a little bit risky with the stricken cars manage to keep my <laughs> keep on the inside although now I'm on the outside for the next corner is pretty scary again <laughs> going around the outside there we all just about give each other enough space there was not a lot of room in that I'm not sure if there's any contact or not but we got away with it however I'm now trying to find a way past the eclipse I'm going to look into the final hairpin can't get it done there and now it becomes the drag race down the start uh, down the back straight sorry I had a slightly poor run off that final corner that's the thing when you're when you're attacking or when you're defending you're slowing each other down as you can see Husky's already caught up to us just over the course of this lap as us three are all <laughs> swabbling over the lead I've got my car on the inside now as we come into the final corner however the Eclipse has just got more grip than me and can just about manage to hold it on the outside and the Clio is faster than the pair of us a couple of laps on and still we battle I, this is me trying to get up the inside of the Eclipse there was a little bit of contact, so I let him back past. I didn't want to really take the place, having pushed him a little bit wide. Then I've got to try and be careful not to lose the place to the Clio as well. Again, I can use the straight line speed advantage of the focus, and I can keep him front as we go into the hairpin. And you can see Husky and I believe that's the Civic have caught up quite a lot to us. Um, yeah, as we're battling, we're slowing each other down. We're taking slightly odd lines and whatever. One well, of the two cars behind us can catch up as they're not having to worry about any of this. As we come in towards the hairpin again, I think about having a, having a sort of a lunge. The Eclipse goes very defensive. However, he does run quite wide on the exit and I can use I can use that speed <laughs> of the focus and get on the inside for the final corner. I might not even need to worry about kind of attacking into the final corner as I do have quite a lot. I was really surprised by the speed of this focus. Um, it probably helps that I'm not running aero. I'm one of the very few people when it comes to these that don't have huge wings and stuff on their cars because I want that extra speed. I do run a little bit wide <laughs> on the exit. The Clio follows me over that way as well. Uh, yeah, I very rarely want run aero, especially in a front wheel drive car. I don't really need it. Now, if I'm running A-class muscle cars, I probably will put some aero on them. But for these kind of things, I don't really need aero. You know, that straight line speed advantage is really quite useful to have. So take off the aero doesn't really affect the handling too much. I go a little bit wide into the first hairpin. However, I can take a slightly different line and get a good exit. I believe he's actually onto the final lap now. And the things are all very, very close. Husky and the Civic have uh, <laughs> caught up to the back of this train. I've got myself just a little bit of breathing space, which is always nice to have. As we come up to the final good overtaking spot, you can have a lunge in the hairpin. The Eclipse outbreaks himself a little bit, allows the Clip Civic, Clivic, Civic, Clio. That's the car. There's so many Cs. Uh, <laughs> the Clio has a dive up the inside. However, the Eclipse can do the cutback and that straight line speed advantage of the Clips. This is why it's so important that uh, you can have some straight line speed. This is a fairly simple overtake in the end. You can get his car up the inside and hold the inside line around the final corner, although it does have slightly less grip. The Clio's trying everything it can. Husky's getting involved as well, and they all cross the line pretty much nose to tail. And that was a, it was a fantastic race. I really did enjoy, <laughs> enjoy this one. It was a great battle for the lead. Um, from all five of us really by the end of that yeah it was a very 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 good race we move on next to the Hockenheim short circuit I do like this track for racing there are so many overtaking opportunities this always generates some good racing pile into the first corner there's always likely to be incidences and I believe a Civic managed to whack the back of a Velista and yeah there, there was not massive incidences as someone forgot to turn that always happens I can guarantee you that somebody will forget to turn there as everybody tries to go three four wide through this first section it doesn't end well for a signet I'm not sure if the signet got spun around or whether he just ended up on the grass yeah too many cars trying to fit into one space does not work um, <laughs> we should know that by now as we come up towards these final corners this one here is another it's all of these corners here are good overtaking spots the one place you don't really want to overtake is through here this bit here if you run too wide the sand gravel or whatever is uh, the sticky stuff so it'll slow you down an awful awful lot um, but the rest of these corners are all very very good places to try and overtake you can see in front of me a Clio made its way past a Volvo I'm not sure there was some overtaking going on further back Husky's making his way through the field as well and now I'm going past a Volvo yeah there's so much overtaking goes on uh, around Hockenheim and this was a fairly a 
fairly busy first lap. I should point out the blue car there that you see at the front of shot, that's not the leader. The leader is miles gone <laughs> at this point. He really did get away very, very cleanly. I'm now trying to find my way past Clio. However, I don't have the straight line speed advantage this time. We are very, very evenly matched. I have a little look to see if I can get up the inside in the first corner. You can overtake into that first corner. However, you have to be side by side. You can't take a lunge into that first corner. There's such a short braking zone. As we come through the second corner, again, the Clio is going very, very defensive. I'm trying to find a way past. We're going to go side by side all the way down the straight. You can see how evenly matched these cars are. However, the Clio does have just that little bit of straight line speed advantage. It also helps to be on the inside through here. I have got the inside line for the next corner. However, I was sliding a little bit and managed to outbreak myself just too much. Ran a little bit wide and the Clio can get a cut back on me. Uh, yeah, this is a, another very, very good battle for position. I'm then trying to go around the outside through there. It's no, never going to work and, and that never ends particularly well. For the black, the Signet that uh, had got spun round at the start was making his way up through the field and I was surprised. I was, Normally when you see these kind of cars, I don't expect them to do well. Short wheelbase cars are notoriously tricky to drive. They can be very, very twitchy. Admittedly, this is front wheel drive. However, yeah, this, I'm not a massive fan of running this kind of car. However, it was doing well going to the first corner. The, I think that was an FTO it was racing, Mitsubishi. Uh, thought about having a lunge, but uh, <laughs> changed his mind last minute, which was a good idea. Back towards the front. This is for second place, and we're going three wide. As if we hadn't learned going two wide down here didn't work. Uh, yeah, <laughs> trying to throw all three cars at one piece of track doesn't really work. Uh, this time, the Civic and Clio in front of me run a little bit wide. I can dive up the inside. I'm on the inside for the next corner as well. The Clio, though, manages to just about hold it on the outside. It's all getting a little bit busy, a little bit crowded as we come in towards uh, some sort of hairpin. I outbreak myself, run a little bit wide. The Clio in front of me runs wide. I get nudged by somebody uh, across the grass and across the sand. However, we all slow each other down, so no harm's really done. I then take a lunge at my favourite overtaking opportunity. Uh, it's a great place to overtake there. Very, very easy to catch somebody out who isn't thinking about defending through there. Although they can also turn in on you, as, as you saw there. No, no major damage was done. I think I have a slight bit of aero damage. I think all of the cars here have, have small amounts of aero damage. But uh, yeah, that, that second to last corner here is a really good place to have a surprise attack on somebody. You can make up quite a lot of places through there because people just don't think about defending that corner as it's not your sort of average overtaking spot. Although if you are going to do that, you have to be aware that they may well turn in on you because they aren't expecting to see your car there. Husky wasn't having the, the best of races. I'm not quite sure what happened to him. I think he got nudged or knocked about in the opening lap and that somehow ended up damaging, damaging his engine. Forza damage can be a little bit wonky from time to time. You can sometimes have really small crashes and do loads of engine damage, and other times you can have fairly large crashes and only do aero damage. It does kind of depend on where your car gets hit and everything. But um, yeah, once you have engine damage, that really is going to, uh, to slow your lap times down. The biggest battle of this entire race was for second. As I said, the leader was gone and we were slowing each other down so much we were miles behind. And I was busying myself trying to find a way past this damn Clio. I just couldn't get past it. As I said before, it had a little bit of straight line speed advantage over me. So I, I, I think my overall sort of lap times wise, my focus was a bit quicker. However, it was proving really quite hard to, to overtake. We come into the hairpin. Clio doesn't quite feel the need to go defensive um, this time round. Runs a little bit wide. As you can see, I've caught right back up to him again, despite messing up whatever corner was <laughs> earlier. However, he's now going defensive into my favourite overtaking opportunity. Can't get the move done there. And again, through this final corner, I'm sort of looking, I'm seeing if I can, but uh, there's no real space. And then it's kind of a drag race down towards the first corner. And as I said, you can overtake here. It is possible, it is wide enough, but you really need to be like completely side by side as you go into the first corner, which I am not. So I'm going to have to follow the Clio through here. We both run a little bit wide. Everybody runs a little bit wide <laughs> and through there. And again, the Clio is going very, very defensive into the next good overtaking opportunity. I was trying to get a little bit of a cutback, but the Clio covered the inside very nicely. And then is back onto another straight where I don't have um, any advantage, even, if, even though I'm in the slipstream. Uh, the Clio is still pulling away, which makes the next overtaking opportunity pretty difficult. I have to hope that the Clio makes a mistake. I'm hugging the inside line, trying not to run wide like I did before. But uh, yeah, it was proving difficult to find, <laughs> find a way past this Clio. I spent a good number of laps uh, stuck behind him trying to find a way past. The Signet was actually making very good progress. I was really surprised by this car. 
Um, I think he was up into seventh at this point, which isn't bad considering he got turned around on the first lap. He's now battling with one of the Civics. Yeah, I'm I'm really amazed that this car was any good. The, normally these cars are absolutely useless. They're really really quite hard to drive. But uh, no, he was he was making very good progress. Didn't quite have the straight line speed of uh, of some of the other cars, and I was never expecting to say that we would have a Civic Type R defending from an Aston Martin Signet. That's not a normal thing that I expect to see, even on Forza. Even in the versus community races, I don't expect to see a Cigna having a close race with a Civic. Yeah, that that was a that was a genuine surprise when I was looking through the replays. Our leader though had pretty much had a perfect race. It started on pole or very near the front, got away from all of the utter mayhem that uh, that went on. I think he had a 2,000 foot lead probably by the end of this race. Yeah, he really did drive away <laughs> from the entire field. I'm not sure how fast the rest of us could have gone if we hadn't been battling the entire time. I think the gap probably would have been a little bit smaller, but um, either way, the Renault Tingo does a celebratory spin as he crosses the line to take the lead. Uh, in second, the battle still wasn't done. This is on the final lap. I was still looking for a way past the Clio as he runs wide on the hairpin. I then stick my car at the inside. However, I now can't do my favourite overtaking manoeuvre into the second to last corner. He's covered the inside. I'm thinking that I am pretty much all out of luck. However, as we run into the final corner, the Clio just runs a little bit too wide on the exit and I can stick my car up the inside and it's a short run to the finish line and the straight line speed of the Clio doesn't have time to catch up to me as we cross the line. That was another really very, very good battle for second place. The rest of the field wasn't particularly excited. I didn't see much racing going on elsewhere, but yeah, that was another very, very good race. We move on to the final race at Iberian and for this one actually the first time we had a full lobby uh, the other ones we'd had a few issues with people getting connected this was the first full lobby that we had on the shortest tightest and hardest to overtake on racetrack that we did but never mind um, it's incredibly busy through here there are oh, two good well I say good there are two overtaking opportunities ish around here none of them are particularly good this you can overtake um, through this corner and the first corner as well it is possible we're following Husky's Eclipse at the moment yeah this track is very very hard to overtake on um, however on the opening lap everybody had been sensible Husky gets very very sideways uh, in his Eclipse there yeah the first lap everybody being very very well behaved the first corner here can cause problems especially if you're further back it is uphill uh, it, is, it is fairly unsighted especially if there is a sea of cars in front of you we often see a few incidences. I mean, sure, there was a little bit of scraping, there's a little bit of paint swapping going on, but uh, there was nothing, sort of no major incidences um, at this point. And as we all run into the first corner, Saab's looking very, very fast. He tries to go around the outside of Husky. Yeah, that's, that's quite unlikely. It is one of the few corners that you can go around the outside of somebody fairly straightforwardly, but uh, you have to be a lot closer than that to, <laughs> to manage that sort of an overtake. And then we have this really quite large train going on. It's rare to see these versus the community there's normally some sort of incident that breaks up the pack but uh, no this is first no uh, sorry second to uh, I can't even count that fast far back as well there was lots of uh, <laughs> lots of cars all in a line at this point Husky's trying to make his way past the preload gonna go around the outside of the quadruple apex that's that's tough to do and it's impressive to do you've got to have a car with a lot of grip if you're gonna pull that one off although you've got to be careful not to run too wide in this final corner which Husky does get away with it luckily as the prelude was too far back a couple of laps on and all chaos is unfolding still start a mayhem going on here as I'm fairly sure they are three or four wide as they go through the bomb hole they it's just ridiculous I've never seen so many cars all fighting for the same little piece of track as they come into Diabolica they are four wide they're almost five wide at some point as Cleo slightly knocks into the back of the city. There is a little bit of uh, bumping going on um, through here. Everything goes a little bit wrong as they come into the quadruple apex. I'm not sure quite what happens. I think the Eclipse slightly tags the back of a Civic and that has a knock-on effect. Again, it's another one of these crashes where somebody just gets it a little bit wrong, slightly tags a car, and because everybody is all in the same place, as that car has an incident, it takes out two cars with it. It is an unfortunate thing, but uh, it kind of happens from time to time. The train, though, was still largely together, and this time it's the Saab's turn to try and get past the preload. This is probably the, like, the biggest train I've seen in Versus Community. It really is quite odd to see what is second to about tenth, I think. <laughs> all in one place at this point I started on pole for this race so I'm on pole with my favourite track with a car that's very very fast launching 
Um, I had driven away. It was quite a boring for me. I was looking in my rearview mirror watching this um, fairly incredible fight going on. This time it's Husky to try and get past the prelude again. And he's going to go attempt to go around the outside. He almost goes three wide into the quadruple apex. That, for me, that's probably got to be overtake of the evening. To go around the outside there, almost going three wide at one point. That's pretty damn impressive. And as the Saab understeers off, Husky can jump up into second. The prelude does very well to avoid the Saab that's about to come back on track. You've got to be a little bit careful uh, when you go off like that, rejoining the track, especially when there's such a big train of cars. That could have been a very nasty incident. There was action going on further back. I think this is the battle for 12th. Yes, this is what's going on for 12th. I think a couple of cars, I'm not sure, uh, went to the pits on the opening lap. And I think, I don't know how they got broken. I didn't see it. But uh, yeah, this is for 12th, 13th and 14th. Uh, and this is what they're arguing over. I think the Yaris got it a little bit wrong into the first corner. And the while well, the Velostar had got past the Eclipse, the Eclipse is now on the inside through the bomb hole section, which is really where you want to be. You can go around the outside. I have seen it done, but it's not particularly fun. And the Velostar running a little bit wide, the Eclipse can get back its position. Yeah, there was, there was good racing going on everywhere here. And I'm surprised by the amount of overtaking that's happening on this track, which traditionally isn't that good. For, for any sort of overtaking, really. This group was still all together. But pretty, this, is, this is just the entire race, this lot, were together. We're currently following the Mitsubishi car. I could follow any one of these cars, and there'd be action going on somewhere in the pack. You can see around the background, the Civic's trying to make its way past the KA. Has a little bit of a lunge into Diabolica, but doesn't manage to get the move done. Yeah, this was some, some really quite impressive races, and this is why I prefer running slower car, or lower PI cars, I should say. By having these cars slightly slower, it means that the racing is a lot closer. You don't have to have such high kind of driver skill level um, to compete in these, and that means that there are more people all together, and that makes for more interesting racing. Now the Colts got a better run out of the final corner, and then it becomes a drag race down into the first corner. This is where straight line speed is still important. Even on a track like this that's fairly short, I'd still like to have the car that's one of the fastest, if not the fastest, in a straight line, as it makes it so much easier if you wanted to do an overtaking manoeuvre. The I think the prelude runs a little bit wide, and the Colt manager gets past him. In the background, the Clio gets past the Civic. There was so much overtaking going on the Clio. I think they're still side by side with the Civic. He's just about got the move done now. Uh, yeah, there really was an awful lot of overtaking going on. I could look anywhere in this replay and something was happening. This Clio and Civic maintained their battle for pretty much the entire, most of the race. Uh, Clio runs a little bit wide in that final corner. You've got to be careful there. It's very, very easy to run, to run wide, especially in front wheel drive cars that have a tendency to understeer a little bit. However, the Clio is one of the fastest cars in a straight line here. I can manage to pull away from the Civic easily. In fact, he can almost catch up to the back of the KA. He has a look at the inside. The Clio then dies to the inside of the prelude. I don't know if they touched. They all got very, very close through there. And now the Civic's right back in the battle. The Clio's having a look around the outside of the KA. That's brave to manage to get around there. However, that straight line speed really is quite useful. And he can get the move done before they even reach the bomb hole section. Now it's the Civic's turn to uh, line up the KA as they come in towards Diabolica and the Civic thinks about having a lunge and I think he does have a lunge in the end. I'm not sure if there's a little bit of a touch on the KA there, it looks like it went a little bit sideways but uh, the Civic gets past him in the end. This is the battle for third I think. I'd pulled away massively at the front. Husky had pulled away from this, this kind of group as well and as I mentioned before they're all in a group, they're all battling, they're all defending, they're all trying to attack, they're slowing each other down. So I can't really say sort of I was Mars in front, but that's probably not a fair reflection <laughs> on all of these other cars. As, well, when they're battling, they're going to be slowing each other down. The Colt is busy trying to find its way past the Saab. The Saab finds itself in a very tricky situation here. It's got to attack the Eclipse, because you've also got to be very careful not to leave yourself too open to attack from the car behind you. The large train had now kind of fragmented a little bit. There was two groups of three instead of one group of ten. Um, I think a few cars had fallen off the back and me and Husky had escaped at the front. The Saab managed to get its way past, sort of, but uh, now it's on the, the outside through uh, quadruple apex. Not really where you want to be. The Colt's just sitting in there behind, waiting for somebody to make a mistake that they can pounce on. The Colt actually getting very sideways in the background. Wasn't expecting to see that. The Saab manages to outbreak itself, runs very, very wide in the final corner. The Eclipse understeers off towards him as well, and now the Colt has the best 
run onto the straight and then it becomes yet another drag race this time it's a three-way one uh, the eclipse is the fastest of the three the Saab's pretty damn quick as well the colt does lose out a little bit um in a straight line Saab dives the inside having attack in the first corner gets squeezed and just about <laughs> just about has enough room to keep his car vaguely on the track and then again they're side by side so like half the field was side by side the entire time it was, i'm really quite surprised to how much racing there was. Now the Colt somehow finds itself on the inside, gets a better run through the bomb hole section, the Saab sideways over the jump. Very scary when that happens, especially if you're running simulation steer steering. It's not unusual to see a car land the jump and then go spiraling off into the wall. Anyway, at the front, it had been much quieter, it had been much calmer, it had been a fairly straightforward race uh, for my focus. As I mentioned, this doesn't quite do everybody else justice, much with the Twingo. Um, I wouldn't say that any car was hugely, hugely dominant in this race, it was just some of us got lucky and managed to pull away from the massive, massive battles, and I did have a fairly, fairly large margin in this one. Husky came in second, while that white Eclipse managed to hold off the Colt for third. Well, that is it for uh, for this week's Fat Race First Community. It was a very exciting evening, and it, there was a lot, an awful lot of good racing going on in that one. And that is the fun of running slightly slower cars that are all very, very evenly matched. It was there was so much good racing. Probably, probably the best versus the community we've done. I, I'm trying to think of another one, and I can't think of a better one um, at the moment. Yeah, it really was <laughs> quite good. The next Fat Race versus the community is going to be held on Thursday the 31st of October it shall be it shall start at 7 p.m. GMT time yes the clocks in England have gone back uh, yeah it'll be 7 p.m. GMT time you'll have to figure out what that is in whichever time zone you may be in the cars we are going to be running are B class heavyweights this means that the cars must weigh 3,500 pounds or over you can start with a car that weighs 4,000 pounds and put weight reduction and stuff on it however it must remain at 3,000 pounds 3,500 pounds or heavier to compete uh, any other upgrades can go there are no banned cars with the exception of the Hummer I am going to ban the Hummer because I don't see the there's no purpose in racing the Hummer. It's not going to be competitive. The only reason you would run one is to cause trouble. So we're just going to ban the Hummer. Um, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, you can do what you want to the cars uh, as long as they remain above the weight and in B class, um, pretty much. If you wish to take part in this, then you can go to our forums. I shall put a link into the description. You go to our forums. You find the Ferraris versus the community section. You go to the sign up bit, and that is how you sign up to compete in these events. However, that is it for today, so thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.